I was going to do a video about disappointment, which really stems out of my frustration about how to grow this YouTube channel, among other things. But the more I listened to myself talk, the more it sounded like whining. And I'm not going to hit you with that. The truth of the matter is that if you attempt anything, whether it's a creative endeavor or otherwise, you're going to experience frustration and disappointment along the way. And you have two basic choices. You can keep going and try to figure it out, or you can decide not to keep going in that direction and quit. I tend to hold on to two ideas. One, you only really lose when you give up or don't try to begin with. And two, with my luck, as soon as I quit, my ship will come sailing in on a silver platter. Kind of odd how you can make pessimism work for you sometimes. I wish I could not pay attention to the numbers, but I'm an engineer who's inclined to fix things. And as my daughter once pointed out, dad likes to count stuff. She's not wrong. It's not intentional. It's just how my head works. So not watching numbers is a constant battle. So why do I even mention it? Well, part of the original premise of this channel was to document the ups and downs as I set out to be a semi-pro writer and photographer. YouTube is a part of that. And this is a part of that process. Because everyone is gone, is going through, or is gonna go through, frustration and disappointment. So it's something we all experience at times. Maybe, perhaps, it might help someone to know that you're not the only one. But speaking of disappointment, when I lived in Ohio, I didn't have a lot of exposure to Cleveland. I didn't have a car. I was a snot-nosed teenager. My exposure was limited to a couple of concerts, which were phenomenal, by the way, and my processing into the army. None of those were really a tour of the city. So what I knew was what I heard and read. And the Agora Ballroom was some legendary holy land where magic happened. All the biggest bands played there. Albums were recorded there. WMMS would do a lunch show live from the Agora with people like Peter Frampton and the like. So much musical history happened there. So I'm all excited. I walked the two and a half miles from the hotel with my camera and took pictures. Said all the appropriate prayers. Cool. The next day, I'm at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame talking to one of the guys there, and we got around to the Agora, and he's like, of course, it's not the original. That one caught fire in 1980? Inside, I shouted, liar, and jumped back and pointed at him. But on the outside, I played it off cool, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. It was like somebody just told me about the Tooth Fairy or the Easter Bunny. What do you mean it's not the original? Doing a little research, it turned out that the original had indeed caught fire in 1986. It was over next to Cleveland State University. I looked it up on Google Maps and it's now a parking lot. I guess it's not really the kind of thing you want catching on fire next to a college. The building that it's in now on Euclid Avenue has its own history. It was a vaudeville burlesque theater for quite some time, but I've decided that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame should take part of the pavement out of that parking lot that's now next to the CSU building and put it in the Hall of Fame with a little placard that says, magic happened here at least until 1986. Unfortunately, that's one of those disappointments you can't really do anything about. It's just one that you have to live with. And live, we most likely will. We're gonna make it through. I'm still frustrated, I'm still disappointed. I don't really know what to do about it. I guarantee nobody wants to see me in skimpy, tight clothing, so that's not really an option. Although we do kind of seem to have a morbid curiosity about horrible things to look at. Maybe that would be a good option after all. People still watch train wrecks. Although there are whole YouTube channels dedicated to popping pimples and such, maybe me in skimpy clothing would go over okay after all. But I'm going to hold that off until the last resort. In the meantime, I guess I'll just keep on keeping on. I know I talked about starting a new series, and I'm still excited about that. I'm excited about the creative part of it. I'm a little apprehensive about how well it's going to be received. I suppose that's all part of it. Maybe by next week, I'll be back on my meds and everything will be balanced back out again and I'll have something witty or useful to say. In the meantime, you have a great week. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for supporting me. It really does mean a lot to me. And I will see you then. Bye.